in Scrooge News. Most Americans have never heard of the Federalist Society for Law and Public Policy Studies, but it's time that everyone knew about that secretive organization. What started off in 1982 as a small student-run group has turned into a massive think tank of like-minded conservatives and libertarians, all working to, quote, reform the American legal system. And as the Federalist Society has grown, so too has its influence over legal policy and legal practice in America. Joining me now for more on the Federalist Society and its efforts to take over law in America is Professor Michael Avery, author of the book The Federalist Society, How Conservatives Took the Law Back from Liberals. Professor Avery, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Pleasure to be with you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, your title, or the subtitle of your book, How They Took It Back from Liberals, uh, suggests that the law was once in the hands of liberals. What, what do you mean? Well, I don't think the liberals ever had as firm a grip on the law as the people in the Federalist Society do. But they have taken the law in a very right-wing direction, let's say from the law of the Warren Court, or even the law as we knew it in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. So uh, would it be reasonable to... Uh, yeah, it, well, let, me, let me rephrase that. There are, there are many on, on my side, on the, many, there are many progressives who would say that what we're looking at right now, for example, in the Supreme Court is one of the most activist courts in, certainly in the, in the last century. Um, that's, and, and that much of that comes out of Federalist Society doctrine, that we're seeing that certainly on the lower courts. Um, if that no is, okay, go ahead. Go. There's no question about that. The, the Federalist Society members believe very strongly in private property. They're opposed to government regulation. They think that the Constitution should be read the way it was in the 18th and early 19th century, and not the way today's world would read it. And they be, believe very strongly in a strong executive. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Federalist Society members in the White House during the presidency of George W. Bush promoted the theory of the unitary executive, which is what led President Bush in part down that path toward the national security state and the electronic surveillance that your previous guests were talking about. Remarkable. How has the Federalist Society gained a, basically a monopoly hold on the selection of federal judges, and what does that mean for our future? Presidents Reagan and George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush uh, believe very strongly that one way to change the law was changing the judges, which is what the Federalist Society members believe in. And so Federalist Society members in the Office of White House Counsel and in the Department of Justice, in the administrations of both the Bush presidents, were the primary people responsible for vetting candidates for federal judges. So all the federal judges picked by either of the Bushes were either members of the Federalist Society or approved by members of the Federalist Society who were working in the White House and the Department of Justice. And those judges are people who believe in an originalist interpretation of the Constitution and who oppose government regulation like Obamacare. And, and that would include the Supreme Court? Oh, yes. They have four justices on the Supreme Court. Roberts and Alito and Scalia and Thomas are all members or former members of the Federalist Society. As a matter of fact, Scalia was the advisor to the student chapter at the University of Chicago back when they started in 1981, which you referred to in your opening remarks. Yeah. Now, that, that is, I mean, those were all Republican appointees. We've been talking about Republicans. Right now, Eric Holder is the, is the Attorney General, uh, you know, running the Justice Department. And yet, this administration, correct me if I'm wrong, fairly uniquely in modern history didn't ask for the resignation of all the federal prosecutors when they first came in. I understand many of them are holdovers from the Bush administration, or at least certainly were for the first few years, years, and also Federalist Society members. To what extent does the Federalist Society, have they infiltrated or do they influence the Department of Justice, and do you think that they have influence over Eric Holder? Well, I don't know if they have any influence over Mr. Holder, but it would have been improper for the Obama administration to seek the resignations of career Department of Justice employees. However, those career Department of Justice employees, not political employees, but the career employees, no, I'm were precisely about the, the ones that the Federalist Society influenced the selection of under George W. Bush. 
Right. But what about, what are, I, I, aren't there a hundred federal prosecutors, district prosecutors? Oh, across, are, the, across, across the across the nation, country, yes, political appointees, the U.S. attorneys, the U.S. attorneys. Yes. Thank you very much. And, and yes, my understanding attorneys. is that traditionally, you, they, you know, they pro forma offer their resignations. The president accepts it and puts his own people in. And that didn't happen with the election of Barack Obama. And no. I'm, I'm and, and I'm assuming since those were virtually all Republican appointees, they're all Federalist Society people. Well, they may not be Federalist Society members, but they're close to the Federalist Society. Many of them because the Federalist Society people were instrumental in advising George W. Bush about his appointments, both in the White House and in the DOJ in Washington and across the country. As a matter of fact, people in the Federalist Society, like Leonard Leo, were consulted in connection with the U.S. attorneys who were fired under George W. Bush. Remarkable. And those U.S. attorneys, to what extent have they, has that group of U.S. attorneys been changed over the five years of the Obama administration? You know, I, don't, I actually don't know that, Tom, but the thing about the Obama administration is that Obama has not pursued federal judicial appointments with the vigor that he should have, and he has not pursued appointing liberals or even people anywhere left of center to those positions the way he should have, so that the right wing still has a very strong hold on the American judiciary that it got during Republican presidents. Michael Avery, thank you so much for being with us tonight and for writing a brilliant book. Thank you.